Hey guys, Mr. Maestas here. How you doing? New classroom, new digs. You see it's a little bit different behind me, but hey, we're going here. New videos here for the new year. Welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to my channel. If you're not, get your friends to subscribe. Come on. I'll make new videos, get some more stuff on here for, uh, for statistics, for AP statistics, for calculus, and uh, whatever other math you want me to do, I'll throw some more in. Today, this video, I'm going to talk about confounding variables, variables that are confounding my information. So um, what really are these things? And let's talk about them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of give you a, a little bit of a definition, and then we'll look at an example. Maybe that'll clear these things up. So let's talk about confounding variables. Let's go take a look at the board here. A confounding variable. A confounding variable is a variable in an experiment or a study that influences both your response and your explanatory variable. For those people that don't know what those mean, remember that your explanatory variable is the, you know, what's going to explain your response variable, which is the data that you, you collect. I'll explain, I'll rehash those in my example. So a confounding variable influences both of those variables and causes some misinterpretation or misin misinformed association between those two variables. So let's take a look at, at this example I have here. So um, there's many, many must, a lot of research on do, whether small class sizes actually help um, test scores in high school. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out, we're gonna take a random sample of local high schools. So again, this isn't really an experiment. We're not taking, um, in my situation, we're not actually taking and reducing class sizes and then checking the response variable of whether the test scores or college acceptance go up. We're just gonna look and do a little retrospective study. We're gonna go out, we're gonna randomly select some um, high schools in the area, and then we're gonna compare students' test scores and their college acceptances with the class sizes of that high school. What do you guys think? What might be something that's not in my uh, study here that might lead to confounding of the smaller class sizes? Well, let's first talk about the explanatory variable. The explanatory variable here is going to be class size. So the explanatory variable is class size. This is what's going to explain, explain my response, which is the data that I collect, right? And my response variable is going to be um, test scores. Actually, I have two response variables here. I have test scores and college acceptances. Okay, so here's my question for you. Is there something outside, working outside, like not class, not class size, that could possibly be contributing to the um, lower test scores or lower college or higher college acceptance rate or vice versa um, besides the class size? Well, if you think that we didn't actually do an experiment here and all we did was ask people, you might know, recognize that high schools come in all different shapes and forms and sizes, right? We have public schools, we have private schools, we have charter schools, and if you live in a state that just has bad funding for education, you might have public schools that have giant class sizes. But in that same state, in that same area, you might have private schools, uh, Christian private schools, um, you know, there's all kinds of different private schools that have generally private schools have smaller class sizes as well as a tuition program. So people have to pay to go to that small, that, that uh, private school. Um, and you also have charter schools. Now charter schools most of the time are public, but those often have um, you know, different requirements and those are often also smaller sizes. So let's, let's think about this. If I randomly select high schools in the area, uh, I might get a, a private school, a couple of private schools and some public schools and what do we know about the college acceptances and the test scores of students at public schools compared to those at private schools? Well, normally, normally, generally speaking, I guess, the students at private schools normally score higher and get higher college acceptance rates. Well, we're gonna back up just a little bit more. Now that's not, we're not gonna say high school type is the confounding variable, because it could be, that might be one confounding variable. Let's take another step back. 
tuition costs money to go to private schools. So we often can think that there is a socioeconomic aspect here and possibly that people that are um, middle class, upper middle class, have the money to send their kids to a private school, also have the money and saved up to send their kids to college, and that therefore those kids are more likely to score higher and go to college. Whereas the kids that are not, that might be poor or lower class, will be going to the public schools because they don't have the money to go to the, the private schools. And those students, generally speaking, um, go to the public school and they generally are, lowing, are scoring lower and uh, on test scores and they are less likely to go on to college. So our confounding variable here may be socioeconomic status. So that might be our confounding variable. Now, when I do this, if this is AP statistics, well, any statistics really, what we wanna do is when we say what a confounding variable is, we want to state how it relates to both the explanatory variable and how it relates to the um, response variable. That way, we sh clearly show the connection and the influence that it has on both of them. So my confounding variable social economic, um, I would say um, lower, um, economic students. Now I'm abbreviating this. You might want to go in this and you know be a little bit more uh, succinct on this. Lower economic students generally go to public schools. which have larger class sizes. and lower test scores and college acceptance rates. Right. Higher economic students generally go to private schools which have smaller class sizes and higher test scores, college acceptances. So you see how you're related to uh, the higher economic students have, um, it, it, they go to the private schools, private schools have higher test scores and the vice versa for uh, socioeconomic. So that is a confounding variable. It's a variable that confounds, that makes us think that something's going on, but it might not really be going on. There might not be a connection or a, an association between, but the confounding variable makes it seem so because it, it, in, it influences both the response and the explanatory, okay? There you go, guys. This was confounding variables. Don't get confounded. Later, bye.